Hello everyone and welcome to Attingham Park. Something a little bit different today. I'm going to do a little auto drive tutorial. Now this is something that I've spoken about in my Discord before and a couple of people thought it would be a really good idea because I do use it a lot on Ravensburg. And I've had a couple of comments to say that I, the episodes that they watched, I explain it quite well. So I'll just have to take their word for it. So yeah, what we'll do is I thought that this would be a good map to do because one, it's new and two, it's actually just looking around. It's actually quite a difficult map to set up an auto drive for. So I really kind of want to challenge myself to see if I can get this to work. So what we'll do today is just concentrate on getting ourselves a, a loop to the shop and back. And then we'll take a look at incorporating a couple of fields that we own. If we take a look at the map, I own sort of to the left side, the west side, and also down here at Crossfields Dairy as well. I own quite a few bits because I needed to know where the actual animal farms were. So I've can't have purchased those. Don't worry about the money because we're not really going to be using this as a let's play. So I've just... I've just a uh, little cheaty cheaty some money in, as you do. So what we need to do is we need to come from where we are now at the dairy. And we need to head to the shop. So it might be a little bit easier if I show you here. So we're all the way over here at the farm. Now, the reason that I find this a little bit difficult, because if we zoom out, there is no crossing along this river that goes straight through the map there. So we need to travel down towards where these um, root crop fields are and across to the main road and up to the shop. The shop's just here. I did ha investigate if there was a, a bridge here, but unless the bridge is up here by the sweet potato place, I couldn't see a crossing. So, but it doesn't matter because there's a few bits and bobs that we can check out down this way as well. Interestingly as well, these roads are just one-way roads until we get to the main road so that takes off half the work I think so first of all I've come round to the back of the farm here because we need to create a loop we can't just leave a random marker um, we need to you know it needs to be connected all together so what we'll do is we'll do a loop around this way and we'll join it up onto a two-way system all the way to the main road so let's bring up the HUD display so to bring up the HUD display, I'm left alt and zero on the keypad. I've made it a little bit bigger so you can see it properly. Now, the only settings that I've changed so far is that I've changed the scale here. I have changed the line height to above tractor rather than on the ground because when I'm editing and moving markers, I find it easier to have them above the tractor. You might find that differently, but you can that is on the ground when you first start. So you don't have to change that if you don't want to. I have also changed auto connect at the start to no because I prefer when I'm manually editing and putting markers in myself rather than recording them when I drive. I prefer them not to connect, especially when you'll find that really useful when you get to junctions like crossroads. Because if you start auto connecting, it can look a little bit of a mess. Um, so I turned that off so I can connect it myself. And you'll soon know if there isn't a connection because it'll tell you that it can't find the path. I've just, for now, I've just turned the wages to zero. You can have that at whatever you like. I think that goes all the way up to a thousand percent. It's what, what, however much you want to pay them. I've turned folders on because I like to categorize where I go and where the, the, the waypoints are that we'll make. Uh... Uh, you may want to turn the pathfinder factor off, but uh, up a little bit, but I don't usually deal with that. I've never had a problem. Uh, I've taken corner speed down by 50%. You can also change the travel speed as well when you're recording. Um, I've also, I also turned off avoid fruit because I usually just have crop destruction off and that's really good in particular when you're using auto drive to unload combines. But for today, what we'll do is we'll just create a loop to the shop. So on your auto drive display here, you can move it about if you want, but I generally just keep it to the side here 
You can see that we're set to 32 miles an hour on the speed because that's how fast the tractor goes here at the bottom. This little cog will bring up that menu that we were just in. This menu here will change the mode. So this one is just drive. So that will just drive to the destination that you tell, tell them to. We've no destinations because we haven't created any waypoints as of yet, but we will when we get to the shop. But for now, what we'll do is we'll click on this little exclamation mark in the triangle. That will turn on our editing. So now we can record, save, create waypoints, delete waypoints, edit waypoints, for example. Now, at the moment, my mouse is moving around, which means if I move my joystick on my tractor, I can turn, I can drive, but I cannot move with my right joystick. I can't move the display. So if I click the scroller on my mouse, which is the middle mouse button, if I click that down, I can now move back to using my mouse. And if I click it again, I can now go back to using what I want on auto drive. So first of all, we're going to create a one way system around here and we'll create our first waypoint, which is where the cows are. So if we look here, the cows trigger is just here. So this will be our first waypoint and this will be cow farm. We'll then join everything up and do a two way system out the farm and towards the shop. So to create a one way system, if we just click the middle mouse, left mouse button, click the record button and that will pop up with a waypoint. You see it's got a cross because it's not connected to anything. So that's just telling you that that's just a random cross. The red dot in the middle there just tells you that it's a one way system and you'll see when we do the two way system it's a slightly different color. So now we are recording so when we drive forward you'll notice that everything will connect together as we drive. So let's just do a loop around here and then create our first waypoint. So let's create a waypoint just here. Now it's important to know that the waypoint will be created at wherever this little line from your tractor is going so there's a red line if we stopped recording and traveled over here it will the red line will be connected to here so you can't just click on that and change that as a waypoint because it'll actually add it to whatever you are over here but at the moment we're to the nearest one and we're still recording that doesn't matter we can now make our first waypoint so we'll call this cow shed okay so let's finish the loop we're still recording and we'll just drive up next to this point here that we created first of all. So now I'm going to stop recording. Our default folder shows the cow shed that we've just created. So now we've got a point from here going around to the cow shed and back, but I want to create a two way system here. So if I drive forward just a little bit, and this is why I turn auto connect off, because if I had auto connect on, this red line here that's going straight to this first one will auto join up with it. So this is where we can be quite thrifty. So if I now right click on the record button, it brings up course play controls. Of course it does. You might want to turn that off actually. Advanced setting, uh, right click HUD deactivated. Um, to get rid of that. So now we're doing a two way course. So you see here, you've got the two arrows pointing left and right. The purple dot now just shows you that we can do that line as a two way. And all that means is that the tractor or the vehicle that is traveling along that line can come up it or come down it. The only thing that it can't do is it can't, tractors can't cross on that line. So um, with a map like this, really, if you're running a small, it would really have to be a small scale. You couldn't sort of send tractors to and from because if they cross paths, collision detection will be on and they won't go anywhere because they'll just come head to head. And you'll have to sort that out. So just be forewarned about that. But the reason that I like this is now if I left click on this point here and I left click on this point over here, that will join that up. If I right left click on this one and left click on the one I've just created, that will join that up. Now, make sure that your arrows are all pointing in the same direction. So now we have a complete loop. We actually have created our first auto drive network. So because that joins up technically. But now if I drive forward, this will be a two way system. So let's go forward a little bit and show you that. So you see now. That purple arrow. 
That means the tractor can come this way and carry on forward. It can do a loop and it can come back and it can go da back down this line that we're driving. So let's just move that out the way. Let's get that off so we can shift it round. In actual fact, what I need to do is I need to go down into and through that shed just there. So let's just stop recording. So this will be a good chance to show editing. So I got a little bit carried away then, but what I can do to rectify this is if I right click on this um, point here, I can bring this back. So now I've brought that a lot shorter. I right click on this one and I right click on this one. There you go. So I, make sure you do stop recording at this point. And what we'll do is now we'll carry on recording again. So right click. Now we need to join these up. So if I left click on that one and left click on this one, I'm on a one way system at the moment. But if I then left click again on the one I've just connected and the first one, it turns to a purple line. So now I've got a two way system going on. So yeah, apologies for that. I did. I thought that this was over the other side and not here. That's just me not paying attention. But anyway, we can now carry on. We're in record mode. So now we can carry on driving through. And I've had a little look around, um, around this for now, but I haven't had a proper look. So excuse me if I do go somewhere that is incorrect. So let's carry on down the road here. Now, the reason that you would just have this as a two-way road is because, I mean, you could, I suppose you could have it as um, a, sort of a one-way coming up and a one-way coming back down, but I really don't think there's enough room to, to, to manoeuvre um, two tractors really comfortably unless you were way over to the side. But for this tutorial, what we'll do is we'll just create a two-way here. So as you can see, the dots are settling down they're a lot further apart than when you're cornering and that's just because they were going in a straight line basically and they don't need to be close together this will just keep recording till i tell it to stop recording as well now we're coming up to a t-junction so if we were wanting to go left we could just go left right now and we could sort out joining that up later but we're going to go right because we're heading towards the shop and sometimes, depending on the type of machinery that you're using, you really just need to remember that sometimes you'll have a trailer on the back. So the reason I'm creating a loop to the shop is because it's quite a distance to the shop. And when you first start a Let's Play or when you start a new save game, you really don't want to be too back and forth from the shop too much, too many times. So it's easy just to send what you want to, to send to the shop or send it back, buy something, and then send it back to your farm. So this will probably be one of the first things that you do is create a loop to the shop. That's going to be really important. It's the first thing that I did on Ravensburg anyway. I do know that there are other tutorials out there that are showing you how to do this, but a lot of them just kind of created small loops on test maps. I actually think it's it's easier and it's better to show it on real maps because then you get the problems like we had just then and you can pick up all the real life things uh so right we've come to the main road and we need to go right now i might actually just whilst we're here we'll just turn traffic off for this because we'll need to stop in the middle of the road where's my traffic there we go just save it right now so i'm going to stop recording just now just by left clicking that to stop recording so now i'm off the track so i can travel anywhere and i won't record any dots but what we need to is we need to go right here so i'm going to start creating a one-way system now because we'll be going up on the left hand side of the road and we'll be coming back down on the left hand side of the road heading south we drive on the left in the uk and this is based in the uk in shropshire so we will drive on the correct side of the road so now I want to create a one-way system by left clicking. Now I've created my new waypoint. If I click on this and join it up to that with the left button, I'm now on a one-way system. And I will turn and I will now record going up the left-hand side of the road until we get to the shop. So if we curve and turn forward, there we go. 
Now, auto drive will be particularly challenging on a map like this because I'm noticing as I'm traveling past the fields, there are gates in the way. Now, the gates will probably, yeah, you'll have to leave the gates open um, to all of the fields that you own. Because otherwise, there's going to be no way that they can uh, get back in. Oops. Now we're coming to the junction. So the shop now, I believe, is just to the right hand side. So what we'll then head on across is I don't have the traffic on, but we'll head on over to the to the right. And we'll head across the river to the hotel where we start. And I can just see the John Deere banners for the shop. I haven't been to the shop before, so... Looks like quite a small shop. So we'll just head on round in a loop here. And just mark this as the shop. Now, surely... Yes. Aha, so there's a back entrance way here. Let's just investigate how I can get into here. Okay, so I think it's down one of the side roads. So what we'll probably do... Okay, this is all right. We'll come down this side street here and we'll park at the back. The back of the shop. So this will give us a good opportunity now to show you how to... Delete waypoints. So if I hold down the left alt button and left click, I can just delete all of this that I've just made. Make sure that your blue highlighted waypoint is coming up so we can go around and we can just delete everything that we've just done. So we'll park at the back of the shop. That'll probably be the best idea. There seems to be more room. So let's find the junction and then we can turn in again. So if I get back to the waypoint that I would use just before I turn left, here we are. Now let's alt and delete these here. You may wish to keep them just in case. And if I start recording again, let's just join those up. And we're going into the junction here. And then we're going to go left into the shop. And what we'll do is a complete loop around the tree. There we go. Let's just call this one shop. So now in our folder, default folder, we've got cow shed and shop. Now what you can do is you can create a folder if you want, but as we add more waypoints, we'll do that. So let's just keep the one-way system going. We'll go all the way around the tree and back out. And then back up to the main road and we'll head back now. So it's quite easy for us to just now follow where we've been. And I'll meet you back at the T-junction where we meet up with the sort of two-way auto drive system. Okay, so we're heading now down to where we meet up with the one-way system. And this will com actually complete our loop, even though we're not anywhere near back at the farm. So if I come here across as if I'm turning left, if I now stop recording, I need to just join this point here to this point, And that's it. That's our loop completed from the farm to the shop and back. So now if I wanted to come out of editing mode, you see all that disappears. If I now want to send that to the cow shed... That will now head on off to the cow shed, no problem at all. So we'll wait back at the cow shed for that to arrive and we'll incorporate some of the fields around the farm that we own. Okay, so I can hear the tractor, so we're pretty close. So we should be coming, here we go. She's here.
And then what will happen is she'll do the loop round that we created earlier. Just recognising where the cowshed waypoint is, preparing to stop, and we'll stop there. And now we've had a message at the top of the screen. That's it. And just like that, she vanished out the cab and went home. Now, if you would like, so if you have somewhere quite tight on the road, you can just use your middle mouse scroller to just scroll down here, maximum speed. So just bear in mind that you don't have to go as fast because what will happen is they will travel as fast as you record the um, the route at. But you can just operate that. And I find, especially when you have bale trailers or wood trailers like I have on Ravensburg, you won't tip it over if you've got a sudden jolt in the road or if there's a bump or if you're taking a turn, which is why I turn corner speed down from 100% to 50%. Because when you have heavy loads... As we've already seen in my other Let's Plays, you can just tip whatever you're driving over and then you're going to be slipping and you'll be thinking, why hasn't the driver reached its destination yet? And it could be ages and then you'll hop into the cab and yeah, it's on its side, basically. So what I want to do just to finish off today before we move on in the next episode to doing something else, I've opened up, what we'll do next time is I've opened up this gate here and there is a silo which is quite a tight silo, it will actually require some reversing. So I'm, I'm hoping we can do that next time and add a few more cell points. A lot of the cell points are like that around this map. They, I've noticed they're not just drive through. You actually have to reverse into them and it's, it's all quite tight. So this is why I find this type of um, map quite interesting to do an auto drive on because I'm interested to see if it actually works. So if you bring up the editing map again, what I want to do is if I just start start the engine i'd like to just incorporate field 27 here it's just a very tiny field but if i get myself positioned so that i'm pretending i'm coming out of here let's turn it around that's probably about right that's just as if we're heading this way so you don't want to take some of these corners too tight so let's just pretend you have an implement on the back if i record a two-way system now this is why I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why I turn crop destruction off because we're gonna go here we're gonna set a waypoint for 27 then we'll loop back around and join it up so if I start recording right click if I drive forward we're going to be recording a two-way but if I join that one to that one with the left mouse and then back middle mouse wheel to get rid of that we can now turn and set our first field waypoint which we'll do just here So this now, field 27. There we go. So now we have a point from the shop to a field. So if we need to buy a cultivator, for example, or if we've bought a combine, we can now send the combine or the tractor with the cultivator, for example, or cedar to the field, straight from the shop. So if I stop recording now, we've not completed the loop, but let's drive forward a little bit and join those up on a one-way system. What we'll do is we'll do a loop back ground and join back onto this two-way system. So once it's got there, if you then want it to turn around and join back on, I just loop it like this. And this is why I turn crop destruction off. So finish recording with your left mouse button, left mouse on the blue there, wait till that's highlighted blue, and then now that's joined back on. So now you see we've got cow shed, field 27 and shop. So because there's lots of fields on this map, we'll create our first folder as well. So if we click this button here, we'll just create a folder and this will just be called fields. So now we've got default ma uh, default folder, which, can which I think just contains shop and all those random places that don't really fit into a folder like your sell points or your buy points. We can now take field 27. If we left mouse, you see I've got it dropped there. I can now just drag it down till it highlights green. And that's gone into the fields folder. So that's the first look at creating folders as well. So what we'll do is we'll just stop there. Because I think now we've we've looked at quite a lot. And I'm hoping at the end of this series we'll we'll just have a really good comprehensive auto drive network for this map. I'm looking forward to it. So if you've enjoyed it and if you've learned anything, please let me know in the comments below. I'm really keen to hear from you. Um, something a little bit different from me. I try and do something different anyway. So, 
Um, yeah, if you've enjoyed it, please remember to give the video a thumbs up. If you've got any suggestions or comments, like I said, leave them below. I am keen to hear from you. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheerio.